pattern. So here I've drafted my basic bodice pattern and I use my pencil to make a little sketch of how the neckline is going to look like. So here is my vertical lines up to the waist line. So that is my chest line and this is my shoulder line. So my shoulder divided by two is eight inches and I connected my armhole line. My bust that is two inches. So this is what I have on my basic bodies pattern. So just go ahead and make your half scale basic bodies pattern with the waist that and the bust that. Then we'll now start up this tutorial. So I'll be using a princess that for this dress. So the first thing I'm going to do is to take my neckline at 3.5. So my, this is a plus size. I'm using 3.5 for the natural neckline. So I'm going to contour the under bust. You can see my center front. So whatever you have on the under bust divide by four, what you have remaining at 0 0.25 and the rest of it, you add it on this side. So whichever way you know how to contour your under, but just go ahead and use it. But I like to use this pattern I'm using now, this method I'm using. So I'm going to connect the under, but you can see how I'm placing my ruler to connect it. I'll connect up to the under bust line. Then I'll use my straight ruler to connect. Actually, the difference between the under bust and the waistline for this dress is one inch. So you can see how short it is. So the shaded area, I'm going to cut it out because I've contoured my under bust. So like I said, I'm making a princess that. So I'll just take my measurement of the armhole and get the midpoint. So I have 11 inches. The midpoint right there is 5.5. So I'll go ahead and connect my princess that right away. If you want to use a shoulder that, no problem too. So I'm going to divide from my natural neckline, my shoulder divide by two, and I'll connect it to the bust point. That is if you want to use a shoulder that. But for this dress, I'm not using a shoulder that, I'm using a princess that. So I'll just go ahead with my curve ruler and connect half the shoulder, which I just measured right now. So I'm going to connect it, as you can see. So I will just come down one, one more inch from half the shoulder because I really want it to be not too high. So I'm going to connect to the armhole. So this is my princess that which I'm making right away. So I'll come out by one inch and I'll blend it back into the armhole. So the dress is ready. We want to go over to the neckline right now. The pattern is ready. So the neckline, I came down by 3.5 first. Then I went in by two inches. You can go in by one and a half if you are in a smaller, on a smaller size. Then from that point, I came down by three inches or three and a half and came in by two inches again. I made a straight line at that point. So I just made a square of two two inches i will use it to blend the neckline so i'll just go ahead and make a u at that point as you can see so just try and blend the neckline very well so first use broken lines then when you are done with the neckline you highlight the line so i'll come in by three inches from my shoulder and i'm going to come out by two inches from that point once again and connect it extend my line and then connect it to the three inches i made before so i'll come down by half an inch at that point then blend the neckline so this neckline is actually your choice. You, you must not follow exactly this, but if you want to follow what is on the thumbnail, this is how the neckline is made. So I'm going to blend that part. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm trying to blend that part. So if you blend it, just give it a good U shape. So I'm using my pattern ruler to see if I can make that U shape look better than the free hand. So I'll keep blending using the inner part of my ruler. 
So here is the pattern for the front and the pattern for the front is ready to cut right now. So I have my pattern into two F1 and F2, which I've just labeled. So I just go ahead and cut what I have on my pattern. So like I said, this is a princess that which we are making right here. So I'll just follow the lines I made and cut them out accordingly. Then after cutting it out, we are going to jump into the back piece. Although the back piece is not um, difficult, it's actually very easy to make. So I'll, I'm just uh, showing you how I'm cutting this right on camera. So you see how it's being cut. So I'll cut out the dart area right now. And then after cutting the dart, the next is to close up the boss dart. So I'll just bring in my adhesive right away. And I'm going to close up my boss dart immediately. So the front pattern is ready for cutting on our fabric. So we are going to move over to the back pattern right now. So here is my back pattern. Just go ahead and make your normal half scale back pattern. Then after making it, we'll go ahead to alter it. But note that the length of the back will be shorter by 2 inches because of the boss that technique. So I have 16 inches at the back and 18 inches for the front. So I'll just go ahead and um, I use my actual boss circumference divided by 4 and waist divided by 4. But now I'm contouring 1 inch to avoid zip boss. So after contour, this is my new zip uh, back center back line so i'll now take my actual waist divide by four and my actual boss divide by four so that is exactly what i did right now and i connected everything back so the neckline i use for the front i came in by three inches and five inches at the depth neck depth so your neck can be seven inches depth if you want the neck depth deeper so the neck width is the same with the front anyway so i've made the neckline so this is what i got at the end of the day so the back is ready like i said there is no that attached to, to this particular back so one inch is my back back um, contour line so you can see i replaced everything so by taking my measurement from the new center back so now i'm going to cut out the back pattern right away so once i'm done cutting it we are going to cut on fabric immediately so the back is going to have a zipper at the center back we are using a zipper for it and i made the back that less okay so if you want to put a that you can go ahead and make a princess that for it but i don't think that is necessary for now so we the patterns are ready the back pattern the front pattern everything is ready the next stage is to go over to cut so before i cut i make sure i hasted my fabric so i'm using six yards of ankara right here i'll use it for the upper and the skirt piece okay so actually the uh, upper part has a peplon i'll be using four yards for it and two yards for the skirt so I have my Dorfe Satin Fabric 2, which I'm going to use to form the cape. So I've cut out my pattern and I added a half an inch, one inch for zipper, half an inch all around the neckline, and the center front is on fold, and the side is 1.5, I added to the size seam. So now, the next thing we are going to do is to make notches to the underboss so when joining them it will be very much easy for us to join so i'll take off my pattern right now because we want to create the uh, the padding so i love to use my pattern to create my padding so i'll just go ahead and from the bust point i'll take the bust radius so i'm using four four inches right here because the bust point to the under bust is four inches different so i'll just mark it the way i'm marking it to create the uh, bust part so anyhow you know how to 
pad your underboard. Just go ahead to pad. The main purpose of this tutorial is to show you how the cape is sewn. I already have a detailed tutorial on this channel on how I attach the 720 degrees peplum. So you can check it out on the channel too. So I've created the bust padding. So the next I want to do now is to cut it all off in my wadding. Okay, so I've created it using my boss pan all around from the boss point. So I'll just cut it off as you can see right there. So I'll just go ahead and place it on my wadding and cut. So I've cut it out on my wadding. This is how I added my my seam allowances on the wadding i added half an inch so this wadding can be also known as feasible fleece in some countries so it has a sticky part i'll just place that sticky part on the part i made my notch and i will secure with my pin on the front side then i'll proceed to the ironing table after pinning all of these parts to hair stay so the hair stay will help it to lay nice and flat so i'm also going to place the wadding on the other uh, part of the bust here so make sure you align it well the sticky part and the upper part has to lay according you can see i made mark on the upper part so after hair staying this is what i have so the next stage right now is to start from the downside to join the bust here so I'm done joining the bust here. You can see what I have right here with the lining. The, I also joined the lining and iron them nicely. So the next thing we are going to do now is to bring the back pattern. So we'll be joining the shoulder seam lines of the back pattern right and left. I will keep joining them the lining right and left. We keep joining like that, like that. So I'll just proceed to the sewing so i'm done sewing and ironing i have the full back and front together with lining so i will lay them nicely on the shoulder seam lines because i want to go and stitch 0 0.5 inch of the neckline all around so here i'm done stitching and i gave it a good press so you can see how neat and beautiful everything is looking right here so i'm going to join the sides at one and a half inch which was my seam allowance. So I'm done joining as you can see. So next is to create the peplum. So like I said, I already have a detailed video on how I created this 720 peplum with pleating. So this is the pleated part. So if you want to watch how I made this, please, I'll drop the link on the description box below. Just click on the link and watch. So I'm going to mark out the center front of this dress only on the fabric to attach my peplum. So I made a notch to it and I bring in my peplum, my pleated peplum and also got the midpoint. So I attach it at the midpoint. So I'm going to stitch only on the fabric from one end to the other. So after stitching, this is what I have. So I'm going to turn it this way to stitch the lining because i need a perfect inseam finishing so now i'm going to pin all the that line seam line anywhere you have any line at all just make sure they match so here i've stitched at 0 0.5 so i'm going to bring out this dress from the zipper line so that at the end of the day the peplum will look neat and beautiful so this is what I have after I'm done turning it. So you can see the inside is very, very neat. I also use crinoline for this. So just go, go ahead and watch this video, okay? If you want to uh, have this dress exactly the way it is. So we are done with the peplum. So we want to now attach the zipper. So... Here, I've attached my zipper. So just go ahead and attach your zipper how you know how. So now, we are. the dress is ready. The next thing is the, we are going to take the measurements of where the cape is going to be. So the length of the cape to the waist is 20 inches. So what I did is multiply 20 inches by 2 because there are some, folds 22 inches sorry so by 2 will give me 44 
then I'm cutting 180 degrees, so I'll divide by 3.14. So if you are cutting 180, of course this cape is cut at 180. If you want to have it exactly the way it is on the thumbnail. So here I have 14 inches. So I'm going to fold my paper. I'm, I'm going to cut on paper because it has layers. So here is 14 inches and the radius is 14 inches. So I... I have my first length at 15 inches. So the first length is at 15, 14 inches, sorry. So you can see 180 degrees. I just folded my paper, okay, once before I, I now went ahead and create the radius. So I'll cut out the radius. So after cutting out the radius, we'll start dividing this into sections. You know, we have four sections of this cape. So the full length is 14 inches. Now we are going to start dividing to have the whole length we need. So first of all, taper this part before you divide. This is one part we are tapering. The part at the front has to be tapered the way I, I did. That is the part for the front. And the part for the back is going to be straight, just straight the way the peplum is cut, the flay is cut. So now to divide this, I'm going to start from the, I have 14 inches. So this 14 inches, I'm going to mark, go up by four, four inches. The first one is four inches. The first on top is three and a half. So just mark three and a half and the rest, you may mark them at four, four inches. So I'm marking the four, four inches like that, like that. 4 4 inches so 4 4 inches 4 4 inches like that so that is how i divided this cape so just go ahead and connect it so you can see how i'm connecting them so make sure the 4 4 inches you marked is uh, correct so the total is 14 inches actually so the first one was 3.5 and the rest was about um, four four inches okay so you can see i have one two three four of them of the capes so i have to remark the neck the that part that is the way it should lay so just make everything start from the starting point and connect accordingly okay so now we are going to start the cutting on our fabric so I just fold my fabric into two, place my tape, my cape, and cut it. You can see it's placed into two. So I'm going to cut the first one, which will be the base of this layered cape. So I'll just go ahead and cut the base of the layered cape. So after cutting it, I'm going to hair stay, and I'm going to stitch and top stitch. So after doing that, so you can see I, I cut only two for one side. So I will place it on top of another fabric and cut. So here I have four for right and left. The cape is on the right and on the left. So you have to have cut four pieces. So you'll be able to sew both lining fabric of the cape like that. So I'm taking off my pins and I'll go ahead to hair stay. Make sure you hair stay only one side. So you'll be able to stitch this. So I'm done. Uh, I'm done cutting now so i just picked up one and i'm pinning it you can see how i'm pinning i'm pinning in the direction that i can remove my pin after i'm done hair stain so i i have to remove the other one because i have two capes there so you see what i'm doing very well so now i'm done sewing i top stitched and i also gave it a good press so the first layer is ready you can see how it is it's very much ready so we are going to move over to the second layer right now so coming over to the second layer all i'm going to do is to reduce remove one layer which is the fourth layer you cut out the fourth layer so it's actually the same process but i just want you to see how i'm um, doing this you cut out the fourth layer and whatever you have you place it on fabric too 
so here i'm going to place this particular one on fabric so i'm taking off that layer and i'm going to place this on fabric right now so i'm going to follow the same pattern i used to cut the base to cut this layer in fact that is how i'm going to do for all so here i have two pieces and i also I made it four pieces too. So it has to be four, four pieces before stitching. So this is the second layer. The second layer is nicely ironed. So now we are going to cut out that third layer. We'll cut it off. And then we are going to repeat the same process we, we did for the first and the second layer. So that is how you keep cutting off, cutting and placing on fabric, hair staying, and then sewing, top stitching, till you get all the capes. So this is actually a very, it's much work. So if you want to make this dress, you have to be ready. So the third layer is ready now and stitched. So we are going to bring back the pattern and cut out the second layer so i'll just go ahead and cut 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 i'm going to cut that part and that will be the end of the cape so i'll take that part away then place this on fabric and cut four pieces as well so here i have four pieces as you can see so i'll just go ahead and stitch and top stitch so this is what i have so all the layers are ready right now for stitching together so the next thing i'm going to do is to bring back that first layer you place the first layer the part that is top stitch has to be under that is the back of the cape and this is the front of the cape so i'll just go ahead and place them place the second layer on top of the first one Make sure you arrange them very well. So after that, I'm going to place the, the next layer on top of it. And make sure you arrange them very well. Then I'm going to place the last layer, which should be number one, like that. So I'm going to secure with my pin and I'll head over to the sewing machine to stitch. So when stitching this, this, this might actually be thick on your machine, but I just tried to stitch. So next, we'll bring in the dress and mark where we are going to sew this cape. So from the neckline, come out by 0 0.75 and then measure 7 inches depth and mark. Okay, so we are going to make a straight line from that point to that 7 inches. That is for the front. Then coming over to the measurement, make sure they are equal. So I'm just making sure what I have at the shoulder line is equal to the 7 inches part. Now for the back, we are going to also come from that uh, 0 0.5 inch. And we'll make a straight line up to the point of the armhole. So I measured 4 inches from the zipper to the armhole area. So that is how I'm going to connect my straight line. So I want you to pay attention to how the lines I'm going to sew this cape. This is very important. If you want this cape to look like what we have on the thumbnail, follow these video instructions, especially on this part. So now from that armhole line, I'm going to mark another line but before that just come in by 0 0.4 i'm uh, sorry four inches four inches from the armhole just make a slanted line can you see so it has to go in a zigzag form and this one from that four inches will go to the waistline okay so you come straight down straight to the armhole then you come down to the mid uh, to the waistline like that so here is my cape so i'm going to sew it show you how to sew it on that line so i will bring in the dress with the marking and i'm going to place my cape 
I will place it the other way around. So I'm going to sew it in, in an inverted form. So I'll proceed to follow the, those lines that I marked on the table. So I'm going to sew them accordingly. I'll just go ahead and sew, sew, sew. I'll sew on those lines starting from the front. I'll just sew a straight line from that front. I'll keep sewing. So what I'm doing is just following those lines. So that, that's why I asked you to pay attention on how those the marking is done. Because the stitching process is not a problem. It's just for you to follow that marking and sew as I'm sewing. So once you get to the zigzag part, you just turn your dress and also turn your, your flay. So I'll keep sewing. So if it is thick, you can just sew two pieces and leave the other piece. So you can see I'm raising the seam line. I have four pieces right there. I'm just raising two up. So I'll be able to sew the other one accordingly. So from the armhole line, I'm going to sew following that line to the waistline. So once I get to the waistline right now, the next thing I'm going to do is to... I'll sew to the following that line. Then if I get to the waistline, I'll turn, turn it the way I'm turning right now. So then you can see the peplum part. So you just go ahead and stitch that part. So you can see how I'm turning it. That's why I'm showing this part. So you understand how it's being turned. So after stitching this part, the dress is ready almost. So I will go ahead and maneuver my way around it. So it's not actually an easy project. So here you can see what I have. The cape is very much ready and it's looking very, very beautiful. So uh, you can decide to use bias to finish up the armhole line because it's a sleeveless or if you want, you can attach a sleeve. So my client wants a sleeve for this dress. So I just went ahead to attach a short sleeve for her. So here is the short sleeve. You can see it right there inside the dress. So that is how we'll come to the end of this tutorial. I believe you learned a lot from this tutorial. So please don't forget to subscribe, share this video so, it, so that it goes viral. Thank you for coming and see you in the next class. Bye.